Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, Clayton. Uh, All right, okay. The, the, the Trump war was a war on the American people, just like the the war on terror is a war against anyone, anywhere in the world that doesn't want to go along with one world government. My opinion. And that's it, and that's all you get, of course, on the my show, is my opinion. All right, where Larry Pratt is on his way to the office, I'll give him a few more minutes, and we'll try to bring him up. Just a few more minutes, and uh, meanwhile, do I remember Zap Comics? Robert Crumb Art were Freak Brothers. I love the Freak Brothers. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Yes, I was in the paraphernalia industry. I went to all the head shops. I knew all of the head shops in the country at one time. Okay, and. Um, that's on the uh, one a chat room. We'll see what else is going on on this one. Uh, Iconoclast Radio, good or bad? They do some good work sometimes. The uh, well, Alex Jones does good work sometimes. You know, just things that he won't talk about. That's all. And. That may be smart. That may be smart. Maybe, uh, hell, maybe I'm crazy here, you know, for trying to stand up to this whole New World Order, Jesuit, Jewish, banking, defense, military, industrial complex. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the one that's crazy. <laughs> All right. You see, wait. I've lost another uh, contact here. Let's see, we can try it, Larry again. We'll add him to the call, and uh, maybe I can get crusade. Uh, Larry Pratt, please. Okay, hang on a second. Should be walking in. Hello, Clay. Hello, Larry. How are you? All right. Uh, I hope Sorry. You, you got you got snowstorms up there or what? What's uh? Uh, you know, sometimes you don't even know what the the cause is, but I got to a place I was really close to the office and all of a sudden the traffic wasn't moving and I never did figure out why. <laughs> I was able to get off before I got to whatever the choke was. So, uh, no, no anyway, problem. Anyway, yeah, sir. we're having fun. All right, sir. Uh, Larry, what's, uh, let me, first of all, I, I, I want you to give me an update on, uh, on what's going on uh, around the country, especially with gunners. But listen, let me get some feedback from this uh, Gabriel Giffords shooting here. Okay. You know, I mean, they within one hour of that happening, they were calling. ABC News was calling me on the uh, on the phone. What? Why are you calling me? You know? No, I don't know this guy. No, I know I don't know anything about it. I just I just walked in the phone ring. You know, that's all I heard about it. And they were hoping that it was going to be uh, some conservative. Well, it turns out the guy wasn't really political, although to the extent that he had political views, he was on the left. What it really was, was a guy who had begun to come apart. He was a guy who was psychotic, really. And this is somebody that uh, was a danger to himself, had been for quite some time. He was on all kinds of drugs, including marijuana, um, including um, cocaine, sarvia, um, Ambien, a couple other things I can't even remember right now. He, he was uh, on prescription drugs? Uh, Ambien's a prescription drug, but uh, otherwise a lot of these other things were... Uh, Sarvi is apparently a natural hallucinogen that he was on, and um, he didn't uh, um, need any prescription for that. And, of course, cocaine and marijuana... Uh, <laughs> You don't get a prescription for him. No. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, this guy was just uh, a loser, 
and it, there, there was a spiritual dimension to his collapse that I think uh, they, the left doesn't want to at all deal with, and that's why they were so hoping it was you or Sarah Palin or Rush Limbaugh or something like that. That's right. Um, the sheriff, the sheriff here, Dupnik, Dupnik was actually pointing a finger at, at people like Rush Limbaugh. Exactly, uh, because that was uh, in their fantasy world. It had to be. It couldn't be that the guy was a product of the left. Not th not that he was acting as a left winger, but I'm saying he was a product as much as anything of the left and his own uh, decomposition. He had gone to a school system in Pima County that was hugely left wing. That was totally anti Christ. And this guy had, among his other left-wing identifications, had become very anti-Christian. The school system was so bad, is probably still so bad, that the legislature uh, passed a state law saying that you can't use materials from La Raza and La Mecha in, the, in your curriculum. The, another component in their curriculum, just to finish off the anti-right or wrong kind of thinking that used to be taught in schools uh, was the uh, teaching that uh, was coming from smaller communities, an organization set up by none other than unrepentant terrorist Bill Ayers and run by self-avowed communist Mike Klonsky. So not too surprisingly, there wasn't a whole lot of honoring God, of exalting America's exceptional past, none of that sort of thing. And then this guy, being open uh, because of those kinds of teaching, fell into nihilism. He was a reader of uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, a German nihilist, who had taught essentially that the reality that you and I live in is not real, that reality really is subconscious. And he talked some about conscious dreaming on his web postings, and I thought, what in the world is that? Well, then I, I came to realize that, well, if you're into nihilism, then that certainly would be part of the way you think, and if you're doing a lot of drugs, uh, then your self-conscious becomes also a natural place where you want to go. And then, to cap it all off, uh, and to make sure that he was the personification of evil, Shooter Boy had a satanic altar in his backyard. He had a bucket of dirt with a saw in it, and alongside it, some votive candles, and in front of it, uh, a plate of rotten fruit. Uh, <laughs> absolutely out of central casting. And so, to the dismay of the left, this guy was one of their spawn. This is what they their curriculum encourages people to do. It's only by the grace of God that most people don't become as bad as this guy was, but... To blame this on the right is they wish. Oh, how they wished no, uh, of Sarah course. Palin's crosshairs had done it. But you know That's what? Right. Liberal Bob Beckel was decent enough to say on Hannity's uh, uh, television show, wait a minute, my fellow liberals, I think I'm the one that invented the use of crosshairs and bullseyes in political races when I was consulting candidates. And then he went on to point out, come on, chill it. Uh, everybody in politics talks about targeting races, taking out an opponent, putting crosshairs and bullseyes on districts and, and on candidates. That's just the way we talk. And when you think about it, that kind of figures as well, because 